So we're back at it again. It's Eric Snell, the author of the Fit Businessman book. And periodization is today's topic. This might be the number one motivational tool for anyone that would like to have a long life of sports. And I'm not talking about doing sports in your 20s and you know, having a beer belly when you're 30 and then starting to train for marathons when you're 40 or 50 years old, because that's usually what happens. And periodization, if used correctly, can actually brainwash yourself to maintain and never ever stop your sports during your lifetime. So what is periodization? Well, periodization is something that no one will tell you about unless you compete in a sport. In most sports, you have to perform at your best at a certain time. It could be, you know, every fourth year, maybe in the Olympics at three o'clock in the second heat. That's when you need to, your body needs to perform the, the best ever. It doesn't matter what happens the other, the four years before that. It's just that afternoon that counts. Or it could be for a three month uh, season, you have basketball games, you need to be at your best those three months, the rest of the year doesn't matter. So periodization is the means to reach that peak, to be able to perform really, really well at a certain time. And the periodization the, pre the principle behind it is to gradually change the training and adapt the body and hopefully get a better result than by simply just doing the same thing all over again. So yes, you guessed it right. I'm not doing bench press every Monday, three times 10. And I haven't been doing that, you know, 30 years in a row. That's not how you motivate yourself and keep going. So what type of periodizations are there? Well, there's, uh, let's say, there's a very popular six week periodization. And this is a category where you might see a lot of um, CrossFit athletes, uh, maybe power lifters, uh, anyone that that's into to lifting weights, they would find a, a program, a six week squatting program, or uh, improve, improve your vertical in, in six weeks. And the program will be designed usually with linear, uh, linear periodization. And that means that uh, you start off with more repetitions, but less resistance, and then you end up with uh, less repetitions and uh, more resistance. And this is a very common way. And also uh, studies have shown that this is the most efficient way to do the linear periodization uh, compared to reverse linear periodization, where you do the opposite. So you would start with big weights and uh, not do that many repetitions. And then you end up with less resistance and you would do more repetitions. So all these six week periods. Uh, those are very popular. And um, I know some people kind of make jokes about it. But it's actually a way for a lot of athletes and uh, recreational athletes or professional athletes to stay motivated as well. And by changing the program every six weeks, not only does it keep your interest in it, but it also brings a variation that will safeguard you from maybe injuries from overusing the same joints, the same movements, the same patterns uh, for weeks in, weeks at a time. So the number one reason to use periodization is to keep motivated. But the second one is really to keep you healthy and keep a, a good balance in your body. Because if you would now train always the same thing, then of course you're going to have an imbalance. If you do the same movement your whole life, of course, that's going to lead to problems. So you want to change it up a bit. And that's the good thing when you have a coach or you have a training group, then there is someone telling you that, okay, 
uh, for this week, we're going to do this exercise and this week we're going to change it up. And this, why, this is why I really recommend that you have a coach. It doesn't really matter what type of coach it is, but it will give you sort of a sense of purpose. And that's something, if, if you want to reach a certain goal, that will motivate you as well. So if you have a wedding or if you have a, a competition and you want to be at your best at that time and you know it's going to come in, in six months, then maybe it's easier for you to, to actually go and train. Because if we take a, a regular, I don't know, running practice, and if the coach would tell you, okay, today we run 10 times 400 meters, four, meter, uh, four minute rest in between, and he would do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, no one would stay in that running group. Even if they know that, okay, I'm gonna perform well in the summer, but it's the same thing all the time. Okay, then you get a competition maybe in one month. Okay, I could do maybe four weeks of the same damn training. Yeah, may maybe I could do that. Okay, what, what if the weather is bad? It rains. The, my, the training partners are, are not nice. Uh, you don't like the, the attitude of the coach or the coach is yelling a lot. But you have that goal in mind. Okay, in one month, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to it. And I think this is what uh, is also very difficult if you focus too much on the end goal in your periodization. And I can see that almost everyone that is a competitive athlete in their 20s will do zero sports when they're 30. Nothing. Because they reach the goal and at a certain age you either didn't have time, interest, or you couldn't perform on that level. So then you don't want to even bother to train because you know you're not going to reach that level. You know that if you have a competition in six months, you're not going to be as good as you, was, you were before. So it could also be very dangerous to only rely on that gold. So when it comes to periodization, um, I tend to just focus on a framework. And this is also what I recommend that you would try, that you think about, let's say, a year. In one year, how do you think you should train during summer? How should you train during spring? What type of four seasons do you have in your year? For me, I've been competing in different sports and I have the possibility to train uh, around the year. But, and the, possibility to compete uh, approximately in, in January and then uh, in the, during the summer months. So for me, it's easy to, in my head, think, okay, I will have an off-season in the autumn and a sort of an off-season in the spring. And in these off-seasons, how I see it is that we try to break down the body and uh, we're trying to, first of all, what we try to do is we try to build a base. And I think this is something that when you think about periodization, you want to have first a couple of weeks to actually get uh, what we call a general physical pre preparation to get the, just the, 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 the base, the foundation to be able to train. So you need to spend maybe four weeks of just cardio training, simple uh, muscle stimulus, just to get general health and general fitness levels up so that you then can start to train. Because if you, if you directly start with, let's say, a, I don't know, a squatting program, you might not have the fitness level to actually perform all the exercises that you should do in one session. So you need to have a, a base first. So in my off season, I would have this base and it will actually be quite often what I call alternative training. So I would try to do sports that I normally don't do. And that means that I would preferably use muscles and my body in a way that I usually don't do. So for instance, uh, I might do inline skating. You know, that's something I rarely do, but if I do it, uh, it's a movement, it's a pattern that I don't usually do. And since I'm 
I, I do a lot of explosive stuff like jumps and, and I use heavy weights occasionally. Uh, I need to also make sure that my joints are safe. Something like inline skating is very joint friendly or, or swimming for instance or doing long bike rides. That's something I, I rarely do but during that time in the beginning of the off season, why not? And then when we get closer to a competition, then you can do more specific and really sport specific training. So if I would be, you know, gonna compete in a basketball tournament, for instance, then the closer I would get to that basketball tournament, the more I would do specific training with the basketball and less of the, uh, let's say, gym training or, or running in stairs or plyometric training without the ball. And this is something that even if you do just, you know, you do your aerobics or you go once a week to the swimming pool for, for, for swimming, you can still keep in mind sort of a periodization because it's really difficult to just go every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and train all throughout your life. Or some people can do it. I, I find it difficult. Uh, it's not motivating me enough. So what I would recommend is at least change your, your program a bit. And if you can have a set time of the year when you want to look a certain way or you want to perform really well at a certain place, then consider periodization. Because this is something that when you start a gym membership, they won't talk about that. They just want you to come there and train, but maybe they'll do a, a six week program for you. But really to have the whole year in review. And then you think, okay, there's going to be a vacation time. That's going to be all from, from the sport. And that's perfect. And for me, actually, I don't really plan rest days because I will have things happen in my life. Just like we have now this uh, virus thing going on. This is sort of messing up the normal routine. Of course, I can't do the training I usually do, but it doesn't matter that much. I, I still know that at this time of the year, I want to do certain preparations. I want to do certain type of training. And uh, hopefully there's going to be competitions this summer. And I know that, okay, I got about three months to go. So I'm, I'm training accordingly. I'm, I'm doing a lot of alternative stuff right now. So it's actually suits me fine uh, that I can't go to, to very specific uh, training uh, places where they have special equipment. I don't need that at the moment. And uh, a break from the regular training is also good. So I don't think uh, you should give up just because your circumstances change. Just keep in mind the, the full year and what you wanna, where you wanna be at certain times of the year. And that will help you go through different times um, in your life, uh, there was a time when I didn't have kids and there was a time when I wasn't married. And despite all these changes and, and moving to different countries, I lived in different countries, it's all changes, but I still maintained approximately the same uh, body, the same performance throughout the years. And I, I plan to continue that way as well. So I'll go a little bit deeper into the details of periodization in the Fit Businessman book. So if you're interested, pick that up. Otherwise, I'll see you soon again.